I don't, I don't mean to mess our theory up, but, but Mother Rogers, you know yourself that back in the day, amen, the Holy Ghost would have us doing some strange stuff. I mean, that's the reason they would call us peculiar people. That's the reason they said it was a difference between the holy and the sanctified church and the, the other churches. They would have you speaking in unknown tongues. And you couldn't control it, but now we can control it. All right. <laughs> now folk tell you to just speak in your heavenly language. And you turn it on. And you turn it off. They teach you now how to speak in tongues. I like that old time way. I, I like it when you just came down to the altar. And you fell on your knees and they said, Terry. They tell him thank you. You told him thank you until they didn't have to tell you no more. Told him thank you until thank you got in your bed. You, you told him thank you until your hands went up. And your feet got light. Before you know it, you start speaking in a language you never spoke before. And somebody said, What is that? But they said, This is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel and said in the last day we, we all sat down one time if y'all do it if you, if you get up again you're on your own Convocation has so many moving parts, amen, we can't do everything out front, amen, but there was one thing, amen, that took place behind the scene, amen, and has to do with the greater new Bible way, Church of God in Christ, amen, one of those persons that was involved behind the scene was our own, the elder Franklin Vanderbilt, come on, give God some praise, come on, give God some praise. I'm going to ask if he would come down, amen, come down, amen, to the altar, along with his wife, amen, come on, amen, come on, Mother Vanderbilt as well, amen, this is a tag team thing, amen, amen, I'm going to ask every elder and every minister if you would stand with me, amen, if you all would stand in front there, amen, right there, amen, God bless, face me, face me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Truly, this is an honor today. Because what many of you may not know, most of you know, amen, Elder Vanderbilt, amen, was licensed, amen, and received his calling right here at the Church of God in Christ. Amen. But he went on later, amen, to other things. He assisted his father, amen, for a long period of time. Franklin Vanderbilt Sr. has been ordained, amen, in the Church of God in Christ and is now granted the title of elder as, amen, prelate of the second jurisdiction of Arkansas, Church of God in Christ. Amen. Attest that he has certified, amen, has satisfied all the requirements of ordination, has pres prescribed by the Holy Scripture, and con contended, amen, in the constitution of our beloved church. He has also, amen, solidarity demonstrated his Christian experience. We therefore recommend him to receive his Christian, amen, wherefore as long as presented unity of the Spirit exists while maintaining a godly life and standard and teaching in harmony with the Holy Bible. We therefore recommend him to receive, amen, this Christian, amen, wherefore done this day, amen, August 
the Sabbath. Sabbath. Amen. 2022 on this, the Lord's Day. Amen. With our presiding bishop, amen, J. Amen. J. D. Sheard, amen, presiding bishop, Bishop J. W. Macklin, first assistant, Bishop L. M. Wooten, second assistant, amen, and Bishop J. A. Lyles, Jr., our general secretary. Ladies and gentlemen, amen, men and women, boys and girls, will you all stand with me, amen, as we present today, amen, this certificate, amen, to the, our elder, Franklin Vanderbilt.
our Father, our God. Lord, how we thank you this morning. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love and your tender mercy this morning. Father, I pray now, God, that your spirit of uplifting be released in this house on this morning. Your spirit of comfort be released in this house on this morning. Father, somebody come needing a touch from you today, God. Gracious Father in heaven, oh God, Holy Spirit, fall afresh in this house right now. Give liberty to the captive today, God. In the name of Jesus, set that mind free, oh God, who the enemy has bound, oh God. Pray now, oh God, for that broken heart to be mended today, God. In the name of Jesus, for we know that the cares of this life are many, God. Oh God, but you care for all of us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that one that is fevered in their body this morning, God. Mm, for we know that there's enough power in the hem of your garment, God, to heal any afflictions, any sickness, any disease, God. We need you now, Jesus. We need you now. Look up on this ministry, oh God. Oh, God, we want to be that beacon light, oh, God, that shineth, oh, God, whereby men and women, boys and girls will come running, oh, God, asking, what must I do to be saved, God? Saved in this house, oh, God. Saved in this house, oh, God. Saved in this house, oh, God. Not only that, but filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, oh, God. Everyone that seeketh you, God, in the name of Jesus. Now, fathers, we get ready to declare your word, God, over these, your people, oh God. I pray now, God, that you will anoint my lips. Allow me to speak as an oracle of you, oh God. Hide me behind the cross, oh God. That Brother Dennis dare not take any glory, God. I'm going to give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, put those blessed hands together. Give God Come on, if you love God, come on. Come on, bless his holy name. Come on, bless his holy name. Come on, if you really love God, come on, bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord. He is worthy of all praise. Amen. You may be seated momentarily. Very grateful to be in the house on today. We do give honor, amen, and respect to our Almighty God, for we know Him to be the King of all kings. We know that He is Lord of all lords. And somebody know that He is the great I Am. Come on, one more time, let's celebrate our choir. Amen. They're coming back. They're coming back. Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. They're coming back. Amen. Stronger than they were before we went out the first time. Amen. Under the direction, amen, of Sister Chandra Perry. God bless her. God bless her. Amen. I'm just excited for this season that the Lord has us in, Great New Bible Way. There's a season of healing. There's a season of rededication. In spite of everything that is going on around us and in our world, let us not lose focus on what God is doing and what he's getting ready to do. It's evident that he's on his way back. The signs of his coming is in the air. It's in the atmosphere. It's happening all around the world. So think it not strange that these things are happening. God is on his way back. Thank God for our deacon brothers, our mothers, our missionaries. Amen. You're looking so lovely on today. 
Amen. Thank God for the first lady of the church. My own wife. Amen. Thank God for the endeavors that she led on yesterday. Amen. Along with the minister's wives. Amen. Amen. In our annual back to school. Amen. Efforts. Amen. That were done throughout our community. Amen. What a glorious thing. Amen. When we are able to give back to the community. Amen. In which we serve. Thank God. Thank God for our First Lady Meritus. My home God bless her. Amen. I am in a place, amen, where I know God is certainly with us. That's where I am right now. I see people moving. I see people coming. I, I, I see people, amen, getting their business straight with the Lord. I see people lining up with his word. Don't you know that should excite any minister, any pastor, any man, woman of God to see people, amen, striving to move closer. The song says, just the closer, walk with me. Pray, dear Lord, if you please, daily. Oh, my God, I just want a closer walk with the Lord. God bless you. I better, I better go into this scripture, amen, because if I'm not careful, huh, I'm going to be into my message before, amen, I know it on this morning. Amen. Those of you that brought your Bibles, let's grab your Bibles. Let's go to the word of God. Amen. Thank God for our assisting pastor today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to the word of God. Amen. Second Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, amen, the 12th chapter is where we will begin reading, amen, on this morning. Again, thank God for all of our wonderful visitors. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I see you, amen, on today. 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, amen, and we'll begin reading, amen, there at verse 1. And it reads, it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions, amen, and revelation of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Verse number four reads, how that he was caught up in paradise, into paradise, and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. Thank you, Jesus. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Mm. And lest I should be exalted above measure, though the abundance of the revelation that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that I might depart from, that it might depart from me. Mm. And he said unto Dennis, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient 
sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in mine infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And God's word is blessed. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. During our convocation, amen, amen, that we just come out of, and what a glorious convocation it was. Praise God for our leader, amen, and those that serve, amen, there with him. Amen. There was a word that was given. Amen. And our theme, amen, that the Lord had given unto our leader was in the form of a question. Will the church, will the seed survive? Thank you for correcting me. Thank you. Will the seed survive? And the answer was yes. Make no doubt about it. Make no doubt about it, God's church will survive. But I thought about that even a little bit more because when I look at all the things that are going on in the world with the economy, amen, they said, amen, that we are in a recession now, amen, for many of us, those of the people, amen, we Amen. For all that we know, amen, our life has been a recession. Amen. Am I in the house on this morning? Amen. For some of us, amen, it's just a way of life for us. That's right. That's right. Not that anything is any different, amen, than what it was some time ago. We just learned how to survive. Am I in the house, amen, by myself on this morning? We just know how to put, amen, amen, two quarters together to make it happen. Hmm. My father used to could get a dollar fifty out of a dollar bill. When God gives you wisdom how to stretch something, amen, you know that you only went to the store, amen, and you had $25, amen, but then you can come home with $30 or $40 worth of groceries, amen, and you know that that was God that did that thing for you. Ah, have mercy, Lord. And as I thought on, amen, that, amen, and where we are now, amen, the thought came to me, amen, and that's what we're going to use to this morning. I survived in spite of my thorn. Come on, look at the neighbor that's looking back at you. Say, neighbor. Survive in spite of my phone. In spite of all the tests, the trials, the tribulations, the persecutions, the heartaches, the setbacks. Even when I found myself being set up, tell somebody I survived. The nights that I had to go, amen, and the tears were flowing from my eyes, from the cares of this life, from the heavy pain and the violence that I had to bear. You ought to be a witness to another brother, sister, this morning, and tell them I. Survive. Now, sometimes when I didn't know where my next meal was going to come from, didn't have a pay a dime to my name. But tell somebody again, I survive. I, I survive. You just see the glory, but you don't know my story. Amen. I survived that doctor's amen, amen, that he gave me that amen, that amen, that that prognosis that 
diagnosis that the doctor gave me. And it wasn't favorable. But I survived. I survived. Oh, somebody ought to get happy and give God some praise this morning.
Nothing is too hard for God. Oh, I'll get some help in this house. Paul is our example today of a man that finished his course as a mover and a shaker in the kingdom of heaven. Y'all pray for me. I ain't going to be I promise you, I'm going somewhere this morning. He knew no limits because he understood that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that he could ask or think. I'm in the scripture this morning. He's born in Taurus, amen, and brought up in Jerusalem. God obviously, amen, had a plan and made sure that his path would cross the path of the line. The most respected rabbi of his day. His zeal, amen, for Jewish law, amen, and his enthusiasm, amen, for ancient, amen, tradition, amen, outshine many of his colleagues as he provided, amen, as he proved to be, amen, an apostle for the Lord. Due to his, amen, constant pursuit of God, he experienced many joys, but also was introduced to many sorrows. I'm talking to somebody today. The church at Corinth was a lively church. It was a large church, amen. It was a talented church, amen. But it was, amen, difficult, amen. It was, amen, deficient, amen, in spiritual and moral attitude. Help me today, Holy Ghost. The Corinth had more problems, amen, in their church than we have time to list or talk about on today. My God. And unfortunately for Paul, not only did he have to defend the faith against false teachers, but he also had to defend his own apostleship. As one was abundantly Amen. And positively called by God. Tell somebody, you just got to know that you're God's chosen vessel. Since, since, since there is no things under the sun new. Amen. We have an encounter. Amen. This spirit. Amen. This same attitude even before nowadays. My God. Even when Jesus was at Jerusalem at the feast of the dedication as it is recorded in John chapter 10. Amen. They had trouble grasping who he really was. And Jesus told them himself, though you believe not me, believe the works. Amen. That ye may know, amen, and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. We know people, amen, by what they do, not by just what they say, amen. So you always look at a person's work. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because their works describe who they are. You can have all the faith in the world, amen. But faith without works is what? It's dead. People do a whole lot of talking nowadays about what they will do, amen, and what they would like to do, amen, and who they are, and who their mother, daddy, and all this stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But look at a person's record yes. of what they have already done. Good yes. God Almighty. Yes. In other words, you look at a person's life yes. of what they have already accomplished, what they have already been involved in. And it gives you some credibility, some, amen, some liberty, amen, some assurance, amen. And then we will live in a world where people size you up based on your appearance, based on your education, or the like thereof. Many times you will miss a person. 
person who's already done something when you just look at their particulars. I'm talking to somebody today. I'm trying to encourage you today. God has no respecter of persons. He used a rooster to crow Peter back to repentance. Can I just name a few? He used a little boy's lunch to feed a multitude, a man of a hungry people. He used, amen, the muddy waters of Jordan to clean up a leprous, serious commander. God can use. He used a prostitute. Did I say a prostitute? Oh, yes, I did say He used a prostitute. Mm by the name of Rahab to hide the spies of Israel so Jericho could come down. Somebody ought to give God a thank you for it right there. God can use anybody. Good God Almighty. In our text today, I'm on my way home now. Today is a beautiful illustration of a man of God. The apostle, the lamb, amen, who after years of service, years of humiliation, and years of suffering, is allowed to experience something that is unique, that is only reserved for a selected few. And I trust that one day that we'll realize that God will not show you everything that he's shown his chosen vessels. You got to realize something today, saints. We may not want to accept it, amen, but he has a few specific individual that has a unique assignment. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, you got a unique assignment. Ah, ah, they have a unique anointing. Amen. There's a life, amen, that makes them stand out from others. Good God Almighty. Just to name a few. Enoch. Y'all praying for me now. Walk with God, amen. And he was not. For God took him. Amen. Then secondly, there's Samuel. Grew up in the Lord and was with him. Amen. And did let none of his words fall on the ground. Good God Almighty this morning. And then there is Elijah. One that was taken up into heaven. On a whirlwind by a chariot of fire. Driven by a horse of fire. With a bit of fire in his mouth. Help us today, Lord, so God has a unique thing for a unique people, amen, and no need to feel bad if you don't use, amen, if he doesn't use you, amen, in a mysterious way this morning. Just be glad that you are in the number. Mm -hmm. Just be glad that, amen, he's still using you in this time and in this day. Because if God is using you, that means you are giving God glory. Amen. That means that you're living something so God, amen, can use you. Amen. If God's hand, amen, is upon you this morning. Amen. That means, amen, that the devil cannot disturb you. Because God Almighty this morning. Uh-huh. You cannot be used by God and the devil at the same time. Amen. Either God is using you or it is the devil. Good God Almighty. But God and the devil, amen, does not dwell in the same place. Somehow I'll say thank you, Jesus. And here, amen, the Apostle Paul had an experience. Good God Almighty, the theme, amen, that many people could not find them, amen, chosen to bear record of that the Lord is the Gentiles. Good God Almighty, amen, he was specifically equipped, amen, in ministry, amen, for this time. Paul's own testimony 
is enough to make us realize that he is no ordinary man. <laughs> In other words, other, amen, he wanted, amen, to question his truth. Others did, amen, his identity, amen. They asked, amen, are he a Hebrew? Amen, is he a Hebrew? Amen, and when the question was asked, amen, are they Hebrews, Paul said, so am I. Are they Israelites? And Paul's response was, so am I. Mm -hmm. Are they a seed of Abraham? And Paul said, so am I. Good God of mine. Paul even asked, amen, the ministers of Christ. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Then use some sermons, amen. Amen. I speak as a free. I am more. Somebody say he was sarcastic by making that statement. Amen. I am more. The people said he had a problem with bread. Amen. But he said, I'm more in laborers because I labored more abundantly than all of the apostles. In stripes above measure. In prison more frequently than in death. All of the Jews five times receiving for the stripes save one. In other words, you ought to look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, I survived in spite of my thorn. Come on, look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you. I survived in spite of my thorn. All of us, if you have one now, oh my God, you will have more, amen, in the days to come. Thorns are those things, those unpleasant trees, amen, that hinder you from doing what you really want to do, that sometimes hurt and ought to discourage you, amen. All a thorn wants to do is to slow you down. Amen. A thorn wants to make you through, throw in the towel. I said a thorn wants to discourage you. Amen. Wants to cripple you. Wants to make you feel like what's the use. And Paul put a name on his thorn. Paul identified his thorn as the messenger of Satan. Good God about it. And said that the Lord allowed the devil to send a messenger of Satan to buffet me, to disturb me, to hinder me. He describes his experience as a reservation of himself from boasting about it. Because God had given Paul such a unique ministry that he had many experiences along the way. And sometimes, 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 folk that has an unusual experience with the Lord can tend to be boastful. Don't pray for me this morning. God doesn't give that experience for us to boast about what we have done. Amen. But to encourage others by our experiences. Good God Almighty. And you know. God is with us, and God is saying that he's for us, amen, and he's blessing us even right now, even with that experience, even with the trials that you're in right now, you ought to tell somebody that the thorn that tried to make me forget about what God has done and about what God is doing right now is coming out, is turning out to be a blessing in my life. It's turning out to be a blessing for my family. It's turning out to be a blessing for my ministry. Oh, good God Almighty. But if I keep in mind, if I keep in my mind, my mind stayed on him. As the scripture said, if I keep my mind stayed on him, He'll keep me in perfect peace. I don't know about you, but every now and then in this life, 
I get a little discouraged. I get a little trouble. I get a little low. Every now and then, Ella Rogers will come by and say, keep up the good work, big brother. Every now and then, Ella, Ella White will say, keep on doing what you're doing, pastor. I hear the mothers praying for me over in the midnight hour. I hear the deacons encouraging me, telling me to pastor, go ahead, even the missionary. And Lord knows I can't forget about my wife. Every now and then that I lay her hand on me, won't say a word, but I know she's picked me up in the spirit and praying for me. But when I'm by myself, tell somebody, but when I'm by myself, I thank God for a word of encouragement. How he'll give to me through a song and he'll let me know that I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord. I got my breastplate on because I'm in the army of the Lord. And I'll find another song and it reminds me that God is a good God. And you will respond by saying, And teached. 
And you will be encouraged. You will be strengthened. You will be motivated. Amen. With all the weights that you carry from day to day, can't nothing lift you like the word of God. There's an answer here. But for many of us, we just leave it like this here on the shelf. It's just like this on the shelf until Sunday, until we come back to church. But you got to learn to do this here on Monday. You got to do this on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and start all over again Sunday. Because this is my strength. This is my strength. This is my life. This is my medicine. This is my pill. Amen. Alcohol can't do what this can do. This is my top shelf remedy right here. For those of us that taste it a little, you know what I'm talking about, talking about top shelf. This is my top shelf stuff right here. Amen, somebody. Amen. This is the best of the best. This is 100% proof. I'm talking, somebody understand the language that I'm talking to. Somebody understand. We all hadn't been saved. But we're in the house today. This is genuine. This is the real thing. How else can I explain it this morning? God is. God is my everything this morning. We're standing to our feet this morning. In spite of my phone, I survive. You're not the only one that's been talked about. not the first one that's been criticized and trying to do good. All you're trying to do is do a work for the Lord and be pleasing in his sight. And then the devil will come along. You think you something. Just because you belong to that church and you put your dress and you put your suit on and you go to that church every Sunday. You think you something. Ain't said nothing about nobody. Had done anything to anyone to harm them, to make them feel bad, but shown them love, kindness. You don't have to do anything for the devil to be mad at you. Just because you live the life, that's enough for him to want to do everything that he can to discourage you this morning. And he uses whatever. He uses whatever. But I come to encourage you today, saints, to hold on. Hold on. It's getting late in the evening. And the sun is almost down. Amen. Don't take this word of encouragement for granted. Don't take for granted, amen, when someone comes along and just pats you on the back and say, it's going to be all right and you hadn't said anything to them. God speaks through us, to us, through others. He uses others as an encouragement, as a vessel. Don't you know I thank God, amen, if Fellow White don't say a word, sometimes he just put his hand on my back and though he's pushing me, keep on doing what you're doing. He said a mouthful and had to open up his mouth. That's God. That's exactly what I'm saying today. That's God. Sometimes people can use something in your hand and you're like, what is this all about? That's God smiling on you. That's God. I want you to see the things that sometimes we take for granted. People don't have to give you anything. People don't have to buy nothing for you. They don't owe you nothing but respect. And then that's earned, not given. 
Respect is earned and not given by the way you carry yourself. Your behavior. God is speaking to us this morning, church. God is encouraging us today. Right where you are this Sunday morning, it's going to be your altar. And I want you to lift those hands. Lift those hands. Every man, woman, boy, and girl that is in here today, God just told me to encourage you today. There we go. Amen. Michaela Pitts. All right, Sister Michaela Pitts. Amen. It's requesting to be a member here at the Great New Bible Church of God in Christ. Amen. Can we thank the Lord? We can thank the Lord. Hallelujah for all souls belong to God. And Sister Pitts, we're so excited that you decide. Come on. Come on. Because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. 